Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics, like Weird Al Yankovic, never goes out of style. This is part three of my PSA Returns video. Back almost a year ago, I sent out a 260 card submission to PSA, and after waiting about 10 months, they're finally back. So today I'm sharing with you guys some of my favorite cards that I submitted, cards from the Neo sets. And anybody that knows me knows that I love the second generation of Pokemon. It's my personal favorite. Anyway, if you guys see anything you like in this video, most of these cards are extras for me, so I'll leave a link to my eBay store down below. Don't feel obligated to use that. It is an affiliate link, so I get a commission off any sales, but that's ultimately not what this is about. This is a chance to appreciate the artwork of the cards, as well as take a closer examination of the PSA standards and how they're currently being applied to grading. Anyway guys, let's roll into the PSA returns. So the first card in the submission was Blossom from Neo Genesis. And this card, like a lot of the cards that I sent, got an 8.5 grade. And I'm not a huge fan of those half point grades, but um, maybe that's something new that PSA is doing. Um, I actually received 25 8.5s, which is quite a few. Nevertheless, this is a great grade. Um, the card is not one of the more desirable ones from the set, so I can live with that. Sticking with grass type Pokemon, we've got a Heracross, and Heracross is known to be one of the most difficult cards to grade in Neo Genesis. All the Neo Genesis cards are really plagued with print lines and other production issues. This one is pretty clean. It does have some factory print lines. As you can see, the back is really nice. That one received the eight. Uh, still a really good card there. And Heracross, as far as a bug Pokemon goes, I think he's one of the better ones. Next up, we have Kingdra. And I love the holographic pattern on the Kingdra. It's got a really cool water theme with like the white and blue swirls. This one got the mint nine. Really solid card. I thought this one had the potential for a 10. Ultimately, a nine is what I pre-graded it as. So it's always good to see a card come in close to what we would have predicted. You know, it's that kind of consistency as a collector that I hope to see as I'm submitting cards in for grading. Next is Slowking. Slowking, very difficult card to grade. This is actually one of the most difficult cards in all of Wizards of the Coast to grade in a 10. I believe there's only 10 copies in PSA 10 in existence. Now, this one got an eight, and of course, it's gonna have some print lines on it. That's pretty typical with any of these Neo Genesis cards. Still a really solid grade for this card. Very playable card back in the day as well. Slow King has that Mind Games Pokemon power, which helps disable trainers in the game. So definitely a good one. I actually submitted two. So here's the second one. This one received a PSA 7. Near Mint card. That's again, pretty much right on with what my pre-grades were. Back is pretty clean for a 7, and generally you'll see a little bit of edge wear on the backs of those PSA 7s. But in this case, it was the front with some of the scratching and print lines that held it back from getting a better grade. Still, you gotta love Slow King. And now we're shifting our way into Neo Discovery. For Neo Discovery, we're starting it off with a bang with Houndoom, which I know is a fan favorite for a lot of people. Not only is he a dog Pokemon, but he's also a darkness type, which is one of the best types if you ask me. This one got the PSA 8. Very consistent with what I was expecting. Again, those print lines are killers. Kind of the calling card of a PSA 8. Back, really clean. Very little, if any, edge wear here. And, uh, if you ask me, those are the types of eights that I personally like more is when it's no fault of the card, but rather the production. Next up is Houndor, another dog one, and another PSA 8. Now I love the artwork on Houndor. It's one of my favorites. I like how he's hiding in the tall grass there. It's really uncommon to see like two evolution cards in the same line. Both receive holographic cards in the same set. So I always found that to be an interesting choice by Wizards of the Coast. Then we're getting into Politoed. Now I sent two Politoeds in this submission. Another card that's really difficult to grade in a PSA 10. This one got the eight, pretty clean. Again, factory production lines is what's gonna do it in. Backside, looking great. The other one came in close to the first one. It was about similar condition. This one though received the PSA seven, which is the near mint score on the PSA scale. Couple of scratches on the front, print lines. Uh, again, though, 
back's really clean, especially for a 7. And I do feel like there's some value there in PSA 7s and 8s. Speaking of 8s, we've got our second 8.5 in the order from the Neo sets. This is Polyrath, the other evolution of Poliwhirl. Um, kind of a cool stance on this one. Like, I know Polyrath doesn't get a lot of love in base set, but uh, his card in Neo Discovery, I think, was a stronger artwork. Also interesting to see him as a fighting type rather than a water type, which I think is what we're all used to when it comes to Polyrath. Next one is one of my favorite artworks in all of Neo Discovery. That's Scissor. He's just jumping right off the canvas, attacking attacking the viewer with those claw hands. Um, you even see the slash marks going across the artwork, which I think is awesome. Backside again is really clean. Another eight. And I think we're going to start seeing more of a market for sevens and eights as the nines and the tens continue to press upward and become a little out of reach for most collectors. Smeargle, another card that's really tough to grade in a 10. I actually submitted two of these. And uh, the first one here, lots of hollow foil, really light in color. It's going to get the eight. There's a couple print lines on this one, just like some of the other ones that I sent. Again, really clean backside. Those blue edges are almost fully intact. Maybe a little dot of edge wear up in the corner. Here's the second Smeargle coming in. Another eight on this one. And I really like the background on these, like Smeargle's using his tail to paint a smiley face or something. It's a really strange design choice, but it's one that I think works really well, especially when we think of Smeargle being like that painting dog Pokemon that he's just doing what Smeargle does. Now this is an interesting one, Umbreon, and uh, I usually don't send in cards that are going to get a PSA 6. This one though, I was pretty confident that's what was going to happen because it's really flawless. The holographic pattern, no scratches, no edge wear on the back. But if you have any type of bend, dent, or pressure point in the card, that's gonna drop it down to a six. And this one has like this little wrinkle in the paint. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not a crease, it's not a bend. You can see it here, it's just like a wrinkle. And uh, it's almost unnoticeable unless you hit it with light and it's really only going through the yellow border. So a little bit strange on that one, but I think this is a beautiful card, one of the best looking PSA 6s that I've ever graded, and it couldn't come for a better Pokemon. Like if we're talking about some of the best artwork of all time, this Umbreon, with the moon in the background, I think is really the pinnacle of what WotC was capable of producing in those early days. So I love that card, that's definitely one of my favorites. Going into our next one is not one of the, the favorites in contrast, and that's Unknown A. Now, for me personally, I always felt like all of the unknowns are basically the same thing. Yeah, I know they have different letters and they look slightly different, but to me, they all look pretty much the same. So this isn't a card that I'm overly excited about. PSA 8 on this one, still a solid grade, still one of the cards that you need to complete the set. Uh, just not one of the ones that I would personally highlight. Now, Ursaring, this was one of the other PSA 9s, and I love Ursaring. Especially this low angle looking up at him as he's attacking makes him look more intimidating. Again, really clean on the backside, a little off center left to right, but uh, still within that PSA 9 parameter. And then we have Wobbuffet. Again, another 8.5 grade here. A little bit unusual, uh, definitely unusual Pokemon. If you watch the anime, Wobbuffet was kind of goofy, always making mistakes, getting Team Rocket into trouble. And uh, I think it served as a comedic counterpoint to Meowth and Jesse and James. And I don't know. I don't know what else you can say about Wobbuffet. Kind of a goofy Pokemon, but one that I enjoy. Lastly, we've got Yanma. And Yanma is one of the most difficult cards to grade in all of WotC as well. This one, you can see the print line going straight across horizontally, just above Yanma's head. And that's going to be something you find with pretty much any Yanma. It's just... That light hollow foil pattern, something about the printing of it, um, it's a tough one to grade. And so those eights and nines, very common with this card. Those tens, almost unheard of. Nevertheless, I'm always excited to get back a good card, and I think those eights, solid grades. Next up, we have Houndoom, and this is taking us into Neo Revelation. And this is one of the coolest artworks as well. I know I've said that a couple of times here, but I love the Neos. This Houndoom is howling up at the moon or howling at something. And uh, you've got all that holofoil in the background, kind of this purple mist 
I don't know if they're mountains, if it's gas. It kind of reminds me of Scar in The Lion King. When he's living in the Shadowlands. Anyway, really good one there. And then this is the last of the Neo cards I submitted. It's actually the only one that I submitted from Neo Destiny. And this is Dark Dawn Fan. And now uh, I thought it was really unusual that Pokemon waited this long to release like an elephant Pokemon. Like there was never an elephant Pokemon released in the original 151. Uh, but Dawn Fan's pretty cool. Neo Destiny is my personal favorite set. You have the light Pokemon, the dark Pokemon, the last set with first edition stamps. Uh, there's a lot of history there, the Shining cards, so I love those. Anyway, that does it for the Neo sets that I submitted. So now here are some other odds and ends, starting with some of the cards that are unlimited. And generally, I don't collect unlimited for PSA cards, but when you have a Blaine's Charizard in good condition, you have to send it. So this one got the eight. Again, the backside's pretty clean here. It's a really nice card, and with Charizards, you really can't go wrong. There is actually a corrected version of that card that's rarer than the error version. Uh, next up, we have Dragonite, and Dragonite is one of my favorite artworks as well, especially this one where it has the rainbow holographic background. This one got the eight, so pretty good condition. Unlimited card. Again, generally not the type that I would personally collect, but one that I felt had potential for grading. Now, I did crack open an Evolutions box about a year ago before they spiked in price, and I was fortunate enough to pull the Charizard, and I've never actually had the opportunity to pull a Charizard from the original base set, so having the opportunity to pull one from Evolutions was really the next best thing. This one I was hoping would, gra would grade the 9. Um, it ended up getting an 8, and I think you can tell why. It's a little bit off-center top to bottom and left to right, so really the only thing going against this Charizard. Still, pretty fortunate to pull one. It's always a great feeling when you can pull a Charizard. And in this case, I actually pulled a couple other Charizards, so maybe I hit the Charizard jackpot when it comes to Evolutions boxes. Here we've got the second one, the Charizard EX. And uh, this one graded a nine, mint grade. Very nice centering on the backside of this one. And then for our third Charizard was the Mega Charizard EX. Now. All these Megas and Moderns and EXs and stuff are a little bit beyond me, but I know this card looks really cool, and I love the flame just kind of dancing around the perimeter of the card. So another Mint 9 here. It's a solid card, and it was a lot of fun to have the opportunity to pull those packs before the prices skyrocketed. So I don't know if I'll ever have that opportunity again. In addition to the Evolutions cards, I also sent in some base set cards. And I actually have a lot of base set on hand, unlimited, that I haven't really graded. So first we have a Blastoise. Brings back a lot of nostalgia because a lot of what I collected when I was younger were those original base set artworks. This Blastoise got the nine. Really solid grade for something this old. I mean, if you think about it, these cards are like 25 years old. Second Blastoise I sent in was in similar condition. This one got the 8.5. No surprise there, uh, a lot of 8.5s. Um, very good quality, good condition here. Uh, like I said, it brings back a lot of nostalgia, and I actually have some more of these that I'll probably send in at some point. I know PSA is now closed down temporarily, hopefully, until July, um, but I do have some more of those that I would like to get graded. Hopefully land a 10 someday. In addition to Blastoise, we've got Clefairy. This was a card that I always thought was a little bit weird that got a holographic in base set. Like out of all the Pokemon that could have got one, Clefairy doesn't seem like the type that would, but it's often one of the harder grades when it comes to the base set. Then we've got Mewtwo, another nine here. Mewtwo, one of the coolest cards. I know this is one that a lot of people really wanted when it first came out, even though it wasn't particularly difficult to acquire. And you could actually get the Zap theme deck and get a Mewtwo directly out of the deck. Still, it's Mewtwo, and you gotta love Mewtwo. Next up is Nidoking, which happens to be one of my favorite Pokemon from the original base set. And uh, Nidoking just kind of putting his hand out there, telling you to stop right there in your tracks. Pretty intimidating looking Pokemon too, if I'm being honest. Then after Nidoking, we've got Ninetales. This was actually one of the first cards that I acquired. Not this specific one, but Ninetales was one of the first cards that I got when I was collecting uh, when I was younger through a trade. 
and um, sent out that nine tails. I actually sent out two of them. Both got nines. I think that's a very generous grade for the nine tails. Uh, it's also what I predicted in my pre-grading evaluation. As you can see, the backside is really clean. Definitely off center on this one though, backside top to bottom. And that's always something that can detract from a grade as well. In addition to nine tails, we've got Polyrath, which is one of the most hated upon cards of base set. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. The holographic background is nice as well. Has a little bit more going on for it than some of the base set cards, which generally are pretty plain if I'm being honest. After Polyrath, we've got Polyrath number two. I mean, so nice, it's a card you have to send twice, right? But yeah, you can tell like that bubbly background on Polyrath is something that I personally appreciate. Um, he looks really angry, I'm just noticing that. Like he's ready to throw down. This backside is looking pretty good as well. So we got a couple Polyraths. Of course we had to send in Venusaur. This one I was expecting a nine, so this one came back a little bit lower than I was anticipating, which hasn't really been the case a whole lot in this submission. Nevertheless, an eight is a great card, great grade, definitely not complaining about that. And uh, this one's a pretty clean eight, I will say. So that'll take us to the Zapdos. And Zapdos is one of the first cards that I pulled from a booster pack. I was at uh, Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota with my family. There used to be a Wizards of the Coast store there. Uh, I was able to buy one pack, and in that pack, pulled a Zapdos. It was a really exciting day for me as a young kid when you can pull a holographic card. That was going to be a good day, and to be surrounded with family, be at the mall, be over summer break, uh, all the stars were aligning that day. So, pretty good grade on that one as well. And that wraps up the submission with some of the oddities. We've got some Neo cards there, as well as some other random modern and base set cards. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for part three of my PSA return submission. A lot of great cards coming in this set. I have more along the way, so be on the lookout for part four. Again, if there's anything you like in this video, take a look at the eBay link down below. It's a link to my store. It is an affiliate link, so if you use it, I do get a little commission off of any sales. Don't feel obligated to though. Uh, it's just something that helps support me and helps support the channel. Anyway guys, I hope you all have a wonderful week. And again, I'm Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. We'll see you all with the next video. Bye everybody.